The Prime Minister speaking in Ottawa. And for more on Tony Abbott's North America tour, I'm joined in the studio by Tom Switzer from the US Studies Centre. Tom, we can see from that media conference that uh, Stephen Harper and Tony Abbott are very much ideological mates, particularly when it comes to climate. Mm. Are they right to be out on their own like this? Well, I, I question the, the preface of the question because uh, there are something like 195 countries that sign up to the United Nations framework on climate change and only 30 odd countries are actually signed up to a carbon tax or a cap and trade emissions trading scheme. Uh, and so in many respects, Stephen Harper and I think Tony Abbott represent the mainstream view. But you're quite right, uh, the President himself uh, will make it quite clear to the Prime Minister that he's in the process of regulating carbon uh, power plants. He won't be able to put a price on carbon because Democrats in his own party, along with Republicans, have made it quite clear uh, that they uh, don't want uh, a cap and trade or a carbon tax because many of those Democrats represent states that are heavily dependent on, on old fossil fuels and manufacturing and oil. So uh, there is a deadlock in the international debate on this question and there's no evidence to indicate that there will be a post-Kyoto climate change consensus in Paris later this year. Stephen Harper's popularity has been waxing and waning, particularly where it comes to issues of uh, exposure to the media mm -hmm. and uh, social media. Um, how much do you think Tony Abbott has to learn from his fellow <laughs> Conservative Stephen Harper? Well, look, um, I think one point that he's making quite clear to the Prime Minister is that uh, Canada has these huge super funds and uh, the Prime Minister is very keen to make sure that they uh, spend more time and energy investing in Australian infrastructure like uh, ports and roads and whatnot. But in terms of social media, look, uh, Tony Abbott is an old-fashioned Conservative. He doesn't like social media. He's made it clear that he doesn't like Twitter. He doesn't do Twitter himself. So he won't be changed one way or the other by his meetings with uh, Prime Minister Harper. Uh, let's talk about that investment from Canada and uh, and how that contrasts with the, the, the next leg of the trip, mm. which is uh, to the US. Uh, uh, Tony Abbott's keen to, to attract that sort of foreign investment, very much that line that Australia is open for business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's right. He's making it quite clear that he hopes that a lot of these giant super funds in Canada will unlock a lot of the invest investment into Australian infrastructure, public infrastructure. Uh, his message will be a bit different in the United States. We have to remember, uh, this is an important meeting that the Prime Minister's had with Stephen Harper, it's the first time since uh, 2006 when an Australian Prime Minister has met a Canadian Prime Minister in Canada. The US presidency is a different ball game altogether. No, no uh, foreign visit is more important for an Australian Prime Minister than with the United States President. And uh, history is littered with examples of Australian Prime Ministers being giddy with excitement before they meet the President. Even Robert Menzies would talk about how he had sweaty palms before he'd meet the US President. Uh, even Gough Whitlam said that he would uh, freeze up before he'd meet uh, President Richard Nixon. Um, and the reason why is because it's the most important security alliance in Australia. It has been for more than 60 years. It is and will continue to be so for the foreseeable future, notwithstanding uh, tensions and, and dramas involving uh, the rise of China. Are those tensions likely to pay, play a role in these discussions, particularly given Australia's um, kind of very middling stance when it comes to China's policy, particularly in the South China Sea and those territorial disputes in that region? Well, very good point. I think what distinguishes Australia from many of the countries in both Northeast Asia and Southeast Asia, most notably Japan, South Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, even the Philippines, which kicked out the US Navy uh, from Subic Bay in uh, 1992, too, they are clamouring for US security guarantees. Even Vietnam, an old Cold War foe, is securing, uh, 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 clamouring for US security guarantees. And the reason why is because China is meddling in their sphere of influence or their, their territorial borders, and uh, it's putting a lot of pressure on those countries. Uh, Australia, on the other hand, is in a different situation. Our largest trading partner is also with China, but the ratio is something like 7 to 1 from our exports to China compared to the United States. So we have a lot to lose in an, a bad relationship with China. So we are in this position, and I think this is a widespread bipartisan consensus, that Australia will increasingly have to ride two horses at once. Its most important security relationship with the United States, its most important trade relationship with China. Labor has come out in the last few days, Tanya Plibersek, saying that Tony Abbott is a bit of a Nigel No Friends when it yep. comes to relations internationally. Mm. Um, You've been speaking with the Prime Minister over the weekend. Who is he and isn't he meeting? Well, look, that was a beat-up, I think, by Laurie Oakes in his column on Saturday. He argued that uh, the Prime Minister had cancelled uh, important economic meetings with several uh, important players in Washington, most notably the World Bank chief, uh, the IMF director, 
and the Treasury Secretary. Well, the fact is the Prime Minister had already met the IMF Director a few months ago in Australia. Uh, he's scheduled to meet the World Bank Chief in Australia next month, and he will be meeting the Treasury Secretary, Jack Lew, as virtually most Australian Prime Ministers do when they're in Washington. The other point to bear in mind is he'll be meeting with the Secretary of State, John Kerry, uh, and a lot of the prominent um, uh, intelligence chiefs, the FBI, CIA, and the head of the National Intelligence. And, uh, and of course, on the economic front, he's meeting with the Federal Reserve uh, Board Director and Governor. Uh, this is not uncommon. When Australian Prime Ministers go to America, they get, the, uh, they get a lot of prominent treatment. And uh, Prime Minister Abbott is no different from other countries. And I think that Tanya Plibersek, in many respects, uh, was um, overstepping the mark by making those comments because this is a bipartisan point. And I find it very hard to believe that uh, someone like Julia Gillard or Kevin Rowe would, the, would agree with uh, Tanya Plibersek's uh, criticisms. Right, Tom Switzer from the US Study Centre. Thanks for joining Thanks so much, Jeremy.